Welcome everybody here to St Guthlax Church in Fishtoft, part of our coastal cluster of churches near Boston in Lincolnshire. We're very pleased that you can join us for this fourth Sunday in Creation Tide. The words of the service are all on the screen. We start with our first hymn, For the Healing of the Nations. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. Creator, Father of all, you give us life, you give us love, you give us yourself. Help us to give our lives, our love, ourselves to you. We share the peace of Christ with one another. You shall, you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We come to our confession part of the service. Let's reflect on the things that we wish to say sorry to God for today and to receive his forgiveness. Let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. O oh God, your fertile earth is slowly being stripped of its riches. Open our eyes to see. O oh God, your living waters are slowly being choked with chemicals. Open our eyes to see. O oh God, our clear air is slowly being filled with pollutants. Open our eyes to see. O oh God, your creatures are slowly dying and your people are suffering. Open our eyes to see. God, our maker, 
so move us by the wonder of creation that we repent and care more deeply. So move us to grieve the loss of life that we learn to cherish and protect your world. God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still the poor cry out for justice. Christ, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still we see inequality and oppression in the earth. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so now we rejoice using these words. We thank God for the world he has made and for all his love and care. For the warmth of the sun, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the rain which makes things grow, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the woods and the fields, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the sea and the sky, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the flowers and the animals, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For families and friendships, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the creativity you endow us with, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For all your gifts, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. And so we have our reading from the Bible. Thank you, Christine. The reading is taken from Amos chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 10. They hate the one who judges at the city gate, and they reject the one who speaks the truth. Truly, because you crush the weak and because you tax their grain, you have built houses of carved stone but you won't live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you won't drink their wine. I know how many are your crimes and how numerous are your sins, afflicting the righteous, taking money on the side, turning away the poor who seek help. Therefore, the one who is wise will keep silent in that time. It is an evil time. Words of inspiration, seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of heavenly forces, will be with you just as you have said. Hate evil, love good, and establish justice at the city gate. Perhaps the Lord God of heavenly forces will be gracious to what is left of Joseph. I hate, I reject your festivals. I don't enjoy your joyous assemblies. If you bring me your entirely burned offerings and gifts of food, I won't be pleased. I won't even look at your offerings of well-fed animals. Take away the noise of your songs. I won't listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Christine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. In modern times particularly, Amos has come to be considered as one of the most important prophets mainly for his uncompromising message about social justice. Two of the most important words about this are used in the reading today, justice and righteousness, and they go together. 
There's a lot about how wrong it is to deny people justice especially in the law courts. That's what it means by the gate, which is where law courts met at the city gate. Amos is all about not denying justice, especially to the poor. But you can find similar messages in other prophets in the Old Testament, like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, and Micah. We must not separate the words spoken against empty worship and the words about justice. They absolutely go together. Despite God giving Israel the rules about sacrifices and so on, God wants justice to be done, because then righteousness will also be done. You can't have a load of hymns and worship and not promote justice. Your relationship with God cannot be right if that is the case. I have read words, uh, though, from some who clearly have a bit of an agenda about what they call empty worship by which they usually mean liturgical worship or some ritual in the service. A different form of worship is sometimes taken for lively worship, whereas in fact it's just a different style. It's not more nor less lively or acceptable to God than other forms of worship. God does not hate a particular style of worship. God loves genuine worship. But the following quotations make clear what that means. The routine observance of the worship laid out in the book of Leviticus is empty only because the people lack the love, concern and humble obedience to God that marks sincere profession of faith seen in justice. Their religiosity is a mockery of true religion. Every aspect of their ritual is an act of disobedience because it ignores the heart of the law, love for God and concern for others. And so the element that will transform the people's empty worship into worship acceptable to God is justice. And that applies to any style of worship. Like the full commitment to good called for in verse 15 in this chapter in Amos, justice and righteousness are to roll on like a river, like a never failing stream. This great Old Testament metaphor is one that the church needs to ponder. An on-off flowing of justice and righteousness is insufficient. Like a stream that does not dry up with the summer heat, these virtues are to characterise the social order consistently and perpetually. Jesus reminds us of the parallel about loving God and loving neighbour found in the parable of the Good Samaritan. St Paul reminds us that love is the fulfilling of the law. The image of the water is both appropriate and powerful, and that's why we've used images in this service. The Lord here gives Israel an alternative to trying to please him with sacrifice and song. Amos says, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The language is written in such a way that it's saying that the Israelites should do this, justice and righteousness, rather than simply sing their praise songs. This is the only use of this particular phrase uh, using this word to roll up with water in the Bible. You do find it in Isaiah chapter chapter 34, where it's not water that's rolled up, rather heaven is said to be rolled up like a scroll. So here in Amos, the word seems to refer to how water rolls over itself in waves. And this suggests that waters that move with speed and in abundance, justice should come forth abundantly and not, as it were, in a small trickle. And so, for example, a video of Niagara Falls seems more pertinent than the river Witham that we have here. This, after all, is not Psalm 23 about leading beside still waters, good though that is. There, our rivers and ponds and drains certainly fit better. But here in Amos, it's a rushing water tumbling over itself. Water, of course, is also refreshing and cleansing, and so is an apt metaphor for justice. In context, this would refer to putting an end to the oppression of the poor, Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This also links to the state of the planet because global warming and problems with the climate are already disproportionately affecting poorer countries and their people 
more than richer ones. In Judaism, there is a lovely idea that's very popular today called tikkun olam. It's a phrase that means to repair the world. This mending of the world is to take place under the sovereignty of God. It's a useful phrase because it can refer to social justice for the poor and needy of the world, and it can refer to the restoration of the earth as well. Tikkun olam is a phrase that's found in ancient Jewish books <clears throat> that has grown and developed over the centuries. It didn't used to mean what it does today. <clears throat> it was more about maintaining the social order, but it has developed over the centuries. Today it can be thought of in this way. When you see something broken, mend it. When you find something that is lost, return it. When you see something that needs to be done, do it. In this way, the world is repaired. And this can apply to us as individuals and to lawmakers and governments and countries. <clears throat> Much that is wrong with the world is made worse by human behaviour. Exploitation, wars, greenhouse gases warming up the planet, wildfires, rising sea temperatures, floods and droughts, greed, hatred of the other, whoever that may be. While we only put ourselves at the centre, we will continue to reap the consequences of our action and inaction. We have based our economics on getting and having more and throwing stuff away so that we can get even more. We all know now that this cannot go on. And it's one reason why, for example, we sell pre-loved clothes at our various fairs in church. Tikkun Olam also appeared in a Jewish prayer called Elenu, which means upon us, upon us. And that dates right back to the third century, though it only became part of the Jewish liturgy in the early 1200s. The verse translated from Hebrew reads this, Let the time not be distant, O God, when all shall turn to you in love when all the brokenness in our world is repaired by the work, the tikkun olam, of our hands and our hearts, inspired by the word of God, the Torah. This repairing of the earth was also and is also thought to bring about the kingdom of heaven. It is helped by action, prayer and following God's ways. The words of Amos and the idea of tikkun olam go together in promoting justice for all. So let us follow them and, the wor and work and call for justice for all and repair of the earth and all that dwells on and in it. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we have our prayer for today, the collect for today. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives' end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now Helen's going to lead our intercessions. Thank you, Helen. Creator and Redeemer, as we approach you in prayer, make us walk in beauty and balance. Make us open our hearts and minds. Make us speak the truth. We pray for your community, the church, the body of Christ. We pray for all our relatives in the circle of life throughout all creation, for those chosen to be our leaders and teachers. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. We call upon the earth our planet home, with its beautiful depths, soaring heights and deep waters, its vitality and abundance of life, 
and together we ask that it may teach us and show us the way. We call upon the mountains and deserts, the high green valleys and meadows filled with wild flowers, the snows, the summits of intense silence, and we ask that they may teach us and show us the way. We call upon the land which grows our food, the nurturing soil, the fertile fields, the abundant gardens and orchards, and we ask that they may teach us and show us the way. We call upon the forests, the great trees reaching strongly to the sky with earth in their roots and the heavens in their branches, the fir and the pine and the cedar, and we ask that they may teach us and show us the way. We call upon the creatures of the fields and the forests and the seas, our brothers and sisters, the wolves and the deer, the eagle and the dove, the great whales and the dolphin. We ask that they may teach us and show us the way. We call upon all those who have lived on this earth, our ancestors and our friends, who dream the best for the future generations and upon whose lives our lives are built. And with thanksgiving, we call upon them too that they may teach us and show us the way. We call upon the nations of the world to hear the cries of those who have suffered loss of homes, lives and hope because of climate change. May they hear the cry of those whose schools, churches, hospitals, roads and infrastructure have been damaged. We pray for justice and for peace, that they may teach us and show us the way. We pray for all the victims of war and violence. We pray for countries where the greed for oil and gas are leading to war. We hold in our hearts those areas where fossil fuel projects have destabilised communities and human rights abuses have occurred. We pray for areas where climate change has led to drought and conflict over water and resources is taking place. May we respond to the cry of the earth and those living in poverty as peacemakers who challenge the violence that threatens us all. We ask that they may teach us and show us the way. Creator, you made the world and declared it to be good. The beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass speaks to us, the summit of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythm of the lakes speak to us, the faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrops on the flowers speak to us. But above all, our heart soars, for you speak to us in Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen. Thank you, Helen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we bless one another in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God, you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love, and setting us free from sin and death, that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day. Take our lives, give us your peace, 
and renew us in the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our final hymn for this service, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. I the Lord of Sea and Sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I save? Thank you for joining us for this service and hope to be able to bring you another service in a fortnight's time. And so a blessing. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Tend the earth, care for God's good creation, and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.